welcome to another haul, this time for October 2022, and then Rowan's here, <laughs> kicking everything across the floor. Hello! Anyway, to get started with this month, I got quite a few light novels this month, actually. And... But first up, I did get a switch going too, so we have Colour X Malice Unlimited. This is a sequel to the Otome game Colour X Malice, which I've been playing recently, but I really like the first one and I've been meaning to get this one for a while, so I just picked it up. There's a myriad of Otome games coming out on Switch that I'm interested in, but I decided to go with this one first because it's a sequel to something I've already played. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Yep. Okay, now to get on to the main event of the manga, and as I said, there's quite a few light novels this month too. So, if you watched my um, manga collection tour, you would have already seen these first ones, because they were in that. None of the other ones had arrived at the time that I filmed. So first up, I have Ascendance of a Bookworm. Part 2, Volume 1, Part 2, Volume 2, Part 2, Volume 3, and Part 2, Volume 4. Right, these are the light novels, I recently watched Season 3 of the anime and decided that I wanted to pick up Part 2 so I could get through that part so I could then get on to Part 3, and Part 3 is like new stuff to me because the anime only covers up to the end of Part 2. But I do have to read through Part 2 first. So yeah. That's Ascendance of a Bookworm, part two. Ascendance of a Bookworm is one of my favourite isekais. Like, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of isekai, but I do very like this one. It's about a bookworm called mine who gets reincarnated into another world. Well, she's called Ueno, and she lives in modern day Japan, and then she gets reincarnated into the body of this little girl called mine in this fantasy world where there isn't any books and she's a bookworm so she decides that she's going to make her own books and it is very good. I can just uh, quickly fix what um, Rowan has wrecked. <laughs> okay, next up in this month I have My Happy Marriage what you want, this is the manga. I have already read the first two light novels of this one and I really liked it. So I decided I wanted to pick up the manga to see what the art style was like and to see what the characters look like because the light novel, unlike other light novels, doesn't actually have pictures throughout because light novels tend to have pictures throughout but Happy, Happy Marriage doesn't so other than the covers I have not seen any art for the characters. So I decided to pick up this one so I could see what they're, they're like, the characters actually look like. And also Seven Seas always insists on putting like short stories in light novel format at the end. But I don't tend to read those. Yeah, I really like the light novel so yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It's a shoujo historical... Rowan! Like fantasy series about this girl called Mio. And Mio is like, she's like the daughter of a well-known family, she's a noble family, but she's treated as a servant, as she is the daughter of her father's first marriage, which is a marriage of convenience, which he did not, <laughs> well, in, <laughs> agree to. And then he married his second wife, which was the woman he was always in love with, so their daughter's treated well, whereas Mio's treated like a servant, and one day she finds out she's getting married off to Kyoko, who's supposed to be like this cold military man, who's like unfeeling. So she ends up getting married off to him, and this is this is really good. There's also supernatural fantasy elements in this, like there's superpowers, and there's like these ghosty don't creatures called grotesques in there, and it's really good. That's it, lie down. Be a good boy, lie down. Good boy. Next up I have a BL one, no it's not a one shot, a BL called Anti-Romance by Seven Seas. And I don't know much about this one because I've read quite a lot of the manga from this month, but I, have, I haven't read these two yet, plus a couple more, but I have read most of them. So I don't know much about this one as I haven't read it yet, but it sounded interesting. I think it's about two college students who are more than friends but less than lovers or something like that 
but this has like a bonus gallery in the back of like colour pages, which is really cool. I think it's okay for me to show this one, I don't think it's an explicit one. But yeah, I did like the sound of this one, I, say, I don't know that much about it because I'm yet to read it, but it looked cool. Next up I have one that I am currently almost finished reading, I've just got one chapter left and that is Therapy Game Restart. And I absolutely love this series so much, it's one of my favourite BLs, these two, they're one of my favourite BL couples. Yeah, they're so good. Wait, this is volume 2 of the sequel restart and it's just as good as the original, I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, we have Minato and we have Sishuma. I actually remember the names because I was reading this this morning. If I had read this yesterday I would not have remembered them. <laughs> but yeah, we have... These are two of the side characters from Secret XXX which I do recommend you read first. And then Therapy Game was made because they were popular and then this the sequel was made because that was popular but it's very good. I do highly recommend Therapy Game. And I'm not going to show any insides from this one. It's not safe. <laughs> okay, next up I have a new shoujo series called No Longer Heroine by Momoko Koda. Now this, I actually very enjoyed this. I've heard very mixed things about it, but I actually really enjoyed this. We have this girl here who thinks she's the heroine of her own story, and she's in love with her childhood friend, this guy here. And she thinks no matter how many girlfriends he has, it doesn't matter because he will always pick her in the end because she is the heroine. But then he gets a girlfriend who he starts to become a lot more serious about. She's not like the other girls he's dated, and she starts to wonder, well, maybe I'm just a side character in that story after all, but... She's a bit of a brat, she's a bit spoiled, but I still like her. It's kind of refreshing to see a shoujo story where the heroine is a bit more unlikable instead of like the goody two shoes that we usually tend to get. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed this one and I like the comedy too. So I would recommend this one if you want a shoujo with a different type of heroine, but if you're not keen on the sound of the main character and that she's like not like this very good person she does bully the, his girlfriend a little bit at first but then she starts to realize that she doesn't actually want to be doing that so yeah if you don't like the sound of the main character i would stay away but this i thought this one was very good and a bit refreshing next up i have Tsubaki Chao Romi Planet, this is another new shoujo brought out by Empress. And this one was very good, although this one is, this one does include a 12 year age gap. The main girl is 16 and the guy is 28, so if you don't like age gaps I would avoid this one. But it's very good. We have our main girl here and she, her father was in debt and she's recently had to like give up the house in order to like pay off the debts and he's gone off on a fishing boat so she's got nobody so she decides to work as this riven housekeeper for this struggling author who's like very lazy and doesn't look after the house that well so she becomes his housekeeper but he's a bit cold towards her but she's like they start to grow a little bit closer and I really enjoyed this one I thought it was good Next up I have The Other World's Books Depend on the Bean Counter, Volume 2. Now this is an isekai I like. This is a BL isekai and we... It's very good. We follow this guy here, he's called Kondo, I think. And he was accidentally summoned to another world. In this world it's a bit like Saints Magic Powers on Opotent. There's a saviour saint who they need to like wipe out the miasma and they summoned her but he witnessed her getting summoned to the other world and thought that to, to try and rescue her so he ended up getting pulled into the summoning as well so he's ended up in this other world but he's like a workaholic accountant and the first thing he asks for once he realises he can never go home is to just have a job. So he gets a job in the accounting department but he starts to overwork himself and then we have this guy who is the captain of the guard who starts to like show some interest in him and maybe teach him about how to work to live rather than live to work. 
yeah, I really enjoy this one. It is so good, and it's disappointing that Volume 3 is not coming out for a long time, because I really want Volume 3. Next up, I have Kaguya Sama, Lovers War, Volume 23, and this, I just found out that this series is ending in the next chapter. Like, not the next English chapter, obviously. The next Japanese chapter. So I think it's going to have, like, 26, 27 total volumes, something like that, I think. I'm not sure, but... I still really enjoy this series. The second half of this volume was better than the first half. Like, cheek a bit at the beginning weren't the best, but we get into the like the stuff with Eno. This volume does focus a lot on Eno and her trying to grow closer to Ishigami, but some of the misunderstandings in this one were really fun. I liked it. Next up, I have Imakoi. Now I'm in Love, Volume 3. This is a sweet Chojo series about this girl who enters. She, he saves her on the train from someone trying to grope her. And he, she like wants to see him again so that she can thank him and they end up falling for each other and start dating. And it's just a very sweet, nice Chojo. Not a lot of drama so far, it, but I'm expecting there probably will be more coming into it. But there's... This is the same author as Wolf Girl and Black Prince, which I'm super looking forward to because I really like that anime. Next up, I have one of my favourite series, and that is Queen's Quality, Volume 15. Queen's Quality is awesome. I've talked about it loads. This is Volume 15. Yeah, this is it's, an, it's a shoujo action supernatural series with some like dark elements in there. And if you're not reading this, I highly recommend that you should. It's very really good, but definitely start with QQ Sweeper first, or you'll miss a bit of the story. But yeah, I'm still continuing to enjoy this. We're still in the snake arc. It's still very really good. Next, I have the chill, relaxing, slice so of life fantasy shoujo, which is um, Snow White with the Red Hair, Volume 20. Again, I'm continuing to enjoy this series. It's a nice, like, Ties of Life fantasy series. This volume where they're continuing, Zen and his gang are continuing their visit to uh, I can't remember the name of the place they're at, but yeah, it, it's another good volume. Next up, I have Alice in Borderland Volume 3, or Omnibus 3. This was a good volume. This volume is the beach arc if you've seen the live action you'll know what that is but this does not conclude the beach arc i think the beach arc is going to conclude in the next on the bus but there was a side story in here which i really liked it was a um, side story four of hearts where they were in these it's about a different character to the main cast and he has to play a game where they're like in these window cleaning boxes like the window cleaners used to clean the big tall buildings and they like it's a game involving them being in that and answering, like, questions. And I really like that. That side story, I thought that was really good. Yeah, I was in Borderland 3. Next up, I have Be Very Afraid of Kanako Inukai. And this was disappointing. This is meant to be a horror manga on the level of Junji Ito and Kazuo Umez. But it really wasn't. I didn't even find this to be remotely creepy, never mind horrific. Most of the stories consisted of about, like, kids and bullying, and the only story in here that I enjoyed was the, um, which one was it? The, um, one about the blind princess. That was the only one I actually enjoyed out of this collection, the rest of them were just, meh. So yeah, if you're a fan of Junji Ito and you're a fan of Kazuo Umez, I would not recommend this. It's nowhere near on the same level. So yeah, I think this one is probably going to be going in the uh, on-haul pile. And next up is another one I have yet to read. I said I've read most of them, but not quite all of them. So we have Raiders on Top Volume 1, and this is the final of the Steamship titles that they brought out. They brought out four. There's another one coming out. I think next year, but these are like, the first wave was these four, and this is the only one I haven't read yet, so this is about a woman who is 
likes to be dominating in the bedroom and a man who like wants to be dominated. So it's like hello again. Swapping gen no no Oh my <laughs> It's like swap no Swapping like gender roles around and stuff. I I've heard really good things about it but as I say I haven't got around to reading this one yet and I'm not going to actually open it because Lots of unsafe for YouTube scenes in there. Next up, I have a BL by Nagabe, who is the author of The Girl from the Other Side. This is a BL one shot featuring anthropomorphic animals. So we have this cat boy, and this wizard boy, and this wizard boy. He's like the only wizard in a, in a school full of mammals. So he gets picked on a bit and he has bad experiences with bullying in the past, but he meets this cat and the two of them becoming become guns and like get closer and stuff and I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was really good. They I would recommend this one. If you like Nagave. This one was a lot better than his short story, um, Love on the Other Side. I haven't read the Wise by Beast of the Wisdom Ridson, so I don't know how it compares to that one, but I did really enjoy this. Hey all again. <laughs> Bye down. Oh boy. <laughs> we recently removed the gate that we had on the stairs, so now he's coming up and down as much as he wants. <laughs> That's why he's here. Anyway, next up I have the Liminal Zone by Junji Ito. This is the f series of sh four short stories. I read this yesterday. Much, much better than um, the, the Inokai one. It's like four short stories. I, can't, I like all the stories in here. They're a bit strange, but that's Junji Ito. <laughs> here we have The Weeping Woman's Way, Madonna, The Spirit Throw of Aoki Gahara, and Slumber. Yep. If you like Junji, oh, this is the small Junji, so yeah, it's good. Next up, I have some light novels. So I got the Case Files of Jura Richard. This is the light novel. I did order the first volume of the manga to this as well, but it is yet to turn up. So for now, I just have the light novel, but I wanted to try out both because I was interested in the light novels, but... It takes me a while to get through them, so I thought if I want to experience the story quicker, it's best to pick up the manga as well. So I did, but it just hasn't arrived yet. So yeah, this is a... It's like a mystery series with like some... Like, we have... I can't pronounce his name very well, but we have Richard Rana Shinghei Devolpian. And he is a jeweler, and he likes solves mysteries involving jewels. And this guy decides to become work as his like assistant. And I think they're both canonically bisexual, and they do some like flirting with each other and stuff. But I don't think this is considered a BL. There we have these two working together to solve like jewel-related like mysteries because we have we have the pink sapphire. The ruby, amethyst, diamond, and rose quartz. Yeah, I will be looking forward to reading this, but most likely I will be reading the manga first because it should hopefully arrive soon. I know it, it has been dispatched. Next up, I did the same sort of thing for this next one, and that is Seventh Time Move. The villainess enjoys a carefree life married to her worst enemy. I did the same, and I picked up both the light novel and the manga. But this one has, has arrived. So yeah. This is a... It's not an isekai. It's a villainess story where... She is married... Well, she's engaged to this... I think he's a prince. Not that guy, the other guy. He's, she's engaged to a prince and... He, like, dumps her. And then she... Goes... And becomes a merchant, I think. And then... You find out that every 
she gets killed in this war and every time she gets killed in this war she goes back to the moment where he broke up with her and she's done this seven times now partaking in many different professions from a merchant to a thief i think she was or a knight or something like that but she always ends up getting killed in this war a war that this guy here started and in her latest life she's decided that she just wants to be with a low quiet life so she doesn't get caught up in this war again when she ends up meeting him and he proposes to her so now she's getting married to the dude who keeps killing her in this war by starting the war in the first place and i think she's trying to stop him from once again starting this war so she doesn't actually end up dead again for the eighth time and i thought it sounded quite interesting so i decided to give this one a go i said as again i decided to get both because It'll be a while before I manage to get to the right novel, so I'll experience the manga first. Like, I think there's only one volume out at the minute. So, yeah. And a couple more to go. First up is Sugar Apple Fairy Tale, and this is a new right novel from uh, Yen Press. The Silver Sugar Master and the Obsidian Fairy. I think it's your... I did know what this one was about when I bought it. But I kind of forgot. But I know she is some kind of magical girl or something. No, she's a candy crafter. Determined to follow in her mother's footsteps. And become a silver sugar master. The title was sold only by royalty by winning first place in the royal candy fair. The journey to the capital will be dangerous, however, so she purchases Chow. A handsome but foul-mouthed fairy to be her bodyguard. Anne wishes to befriend her new companion, but in this kingdom where fairies are treated as property, Carl wants nothing to do with humans. Will this journey with her change his mind, and will Anne arrive safely at the fair? So yeah, it's about this girl wanting to become a silver sugar master by making sweets, and he's a fairy who she buys who is like her bodyguard. I know this one's getting an anime next year, and I also know the manga... There's a couple of manga adaptations. I know this, one of them's getting an English release soon as well. But yeah, this sounded interesting. So I decided to give this one a try. I might pick up the manga to this one too. I'm not sure. It. I know this. There is two actually two different manga adaptations, but we're only getting one of them in English, and I might give that a go too. I don't know when it's coming out though. Will you stop it, Bowen? He doesn't listen. And last up I have, I will forget this feeling someday, which is the newest Yoru Sumino novel. I'm yet to read the previous one I got, because as I say, it takes me a while to get around to write novels. But yeah, this one is about two people who meet in a bus stop, but they're actually from different worlds, but the worlds kind of converge together in this right bus stop, and then they can meet there, but nowhere else or something like that. A bit like one particular scene from your name. Yep. Suzuki Kaya lives an everyday, ordinary, boring life. That is, until a dazzling light appears before him at a defunct bus stop, show showing him a vision of a girl from another world. From that moment, Kaya's life changes as they strive to find ways to meet one another from across dimensions and maybe even fall in love. So, yeah, they're in, they live in different dimensions, but they can meet at this bus stop for some reason. Anyway, it sounded very good. I really like the sound of it. And I really like Yellow Sumino, so I'll probably enjoy it. So yeah. And that is everything from this haul. <sighs> One of the pages is bent. Oh well. It's fine. And that's everything from this haul for my October 2022 haul. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you for another video when I make one. You're gonna say goodbye? You're gonna say goodbye? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> nope.